Alex uh, Newt Gingrich said this is a bold idea, obviously popular with a lot of unemployed NASA workers along the Space Coast, as they call it here in, here in Florida, but some are ridiculing him already. What do you think? Well, I think Newt Gingrich's campaign launches a lot of rockets. Some of them take his campaign to the moon. Some of them land on Grandma's house. You just never know with Newt. But this is actually a good idea. The space program is one of the few things that has produced, the government investments produced economic growth. It's something the private sector hasn't been able to do. It produced everything from Tang to WD-40 to the microchip in the computer. So, uh, and right, you're right, Well, the Gold Coast of Florida, there's so many people who, who not only have lost their jobs, but they've lost their confidence in America's future. I think this is a very smart move tactically and strategically for Gingrich. A colony of Americans living on the moon by the end of his second term, if he's elected president. Uh, you're smiling. <laughs> Well, here's the issue. I do think it's a grandiose idea, and I think that Republican voters are desperate for one of their candidates to really capture their imagination. That's something that I think they're very thirsty for, and I agree in general, it is a great idea, and it is what Americans like to hear. But Rick Santorum is right. The reality of today, and if you actually look at, at Newt's economic plan that slashes Medicare, slashes Medicaid, and, and basically slashes all the programs that middle-class Americans and, and those that are most vulnerable need, that's where reality does not meet what he is saying. But you know what he's really saying to Florida voters who are, who are so pessimistic about the direction of the country is there once was a country that could do great things. We can be that country again. I think it's going to help him a little. It might work for him here. You wrote this last May. You wrote a little uh, column. Newt Gingrich is the devil in, the, in a red dress. I'll read it to you and I'll remind you, Alex, what you wrote. You wrote, the opponent Obama needs to run against, the only one he can beat is the old, uncaring Republican. It is, a, it is not a caricature he needs to create. It lives, it walks, it breathes. It's the Gingrich in this uh, oper, uh, operatic uh, campaign of seduction. He is the devil in a red dress, a temptress who would lead Republicans to ruin. You still believe that? Put, put me down as undecided there, Wolf. Um, yes, I still believe that. I think uh, Newt Gingrich has many great strengths. He's done a lot for the Republican Party. But he's Barry Goldwater. He is an expression of the, the party's principles, but he at the top of the ticket, uh, he is such a polarizing force that, uh, you know, his favorable right now with independence is 21 percent. With uh, Obama's favorable with those independents is 51 percent. I think he would wipe out the Republicans for the House. We may not win the Senate. We'd lose the presidency. Newt Gingrich could very possibly bring back the first two years of the Obama administration when they ran everything. And boy, that's not He's, something Republicans, I think, like want to see. He sounds like a lot of Romney Bob Dole, did you see Bob Dole's statement today? Very tough statement saying very similar yeah. things. It looks like the Republican establishment is really going after Newt Gingrich. But ironically, as Jim Acosta earlier right. pointed out, that could help him. That could absolutely help him, especially in this year that is very anti-Washington, anti-establishment. And I actually think the more they go after Newt, the, the more it's going to hurt Romney. And frankly, you're talking about independence. Romney's support among independents is cratering nationwide. And I think that is what's hurting Newt. It's not that Newt is so great. It's that Romney is so wanting as the presumed front runner. And Wolf, you just had Bob Dole expressing, I think, uh, some of the same sentiments I expressed. But a great Bob Dole story. Newt asked him once when they were both in Congress, why is it that so many people take an instant dislike to me? And Bob Dole said, eh, saves them time. <laughs> you know, uh, the Hispanic vote here, especially here in Florida, Latinos, uh, they're going to be voting in big numbers, as both of you know. I don't know what percentage of the overall state is Hispanic or Latino, but it's significant right now. Republicans, uh, Alex, and, and you're Cuban-American, they're in trouble with a lot of these voters right now. Not necessarily Cuban-Americans in South Florida, but with others. Why? A little bit. I think the tone of some of the immigration debate has not been productive. It has sent a message that we're not just anti-illegal immigration, but we're anti-immigrant. And that's always a mistake. But there's good news. For a party that's doing poorly with Hispanics, we sure seem to be doing well. We've got Marco Rubio in the Senate, Susana Martinez, governor of New Mexico, Brian Sandoval, governor of Nevada. We're winning elections. And, you know, once we start looking at employment-based immigration, Republicans are very supportive of that, of expanding legal immigration. You know, out of a country of 300 million people, do you know how many people we let come into this country every year? For, uh, for jobs, 140,000. That's it. That's the cap we put every year. We have waiting lists that are a million people long of smart, highly skilled people who want to come here and can't. 
We're sending our best intellectual yeah. draft choices can other the, places. Can the Republicans want to fix that? Can the president simply take the Hispanic vote for granted right now? No, absolutely not. And he's not doing that. For the very first time, this administration and the campaign is reaching out to Latinos and, and, and a, in a way that they really hadn't before from a timing perspective. So, I, you know, Alex is right. I wish that the Republicans would actually hear his advice. Republicans are in trouble. And everything that you mentioned towards the end doesn't matter because Latinos are not going to listen to them if on the issue on immigration, on the DREAM Act, Wolf. They used to be a bipartisan issue that overwhelmingly, almost 80% of Latinos support the DREAM Act. Mitt Romney has already said that he would veto it. He wants, no, he wants, let, he said he would veto it. No, and, no, and no, and he so, modified yes, he it the other day. He, he, he said, he he said military personnel no. would be able to qualify uh, if they That's go into the, the military. Act. That's, That's not part the DREAM of Act. It, yeah. But you know, the point on the DREAM Act, though, is Hispanics, no more than every, any, any other group, I think, in this country, want to be bought off with a government subsidy. I think it lessens Hispanics for us to say, hey, unless you give them something, you won't get something from them. No, they come here for just the opposite. No. Hispanics come here for opportunity, for a growing economy, for jobs, but for an opportunity what? to raise I'm their sorry, family. That, that is a ridiculous, not for a handout. That's a ridiculous arg argument to make because Hispanics do not it look at the, to my family. His, and, and, and my family came here too and they never and they, expected they a handout, but they did. They, they, came here, they came here for freedom and they came here for opportunity. They did. They came here for opportunity. And you know what? Uh, Republicans well, are not giving Hispanics right. the same opportunity that they give people like Mitt Romney. We got and a that's good the point. Latina and a good Latino. <laughs>